Hello, I'm Steve Sperry, one of the systems engineers specializing in information software from the northern region of McNaughton McKay Electric Company. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Rockwell Automation's Factory Talk Hub and Factory Talk Vault. I'll also give you a short introduction to cloud manufacturing software. As you can see here on the landing page, Rockwell Automation has made a significant investment in software that is intended to be software as a service. In other words, infrastructure costs are eliminated and licensing is handled by means of a digital dashboard online where entitlements may also be included. So what we're going to talk about today is Factor Talk Vault with design tools. Let's take a look at the product website. We can see here that there's information about the overall promise of using a secure storage that is cloud-based and with a dedicated private area as well as an organizational area to share. This allows us to have content between engineers and then as we scroll down we can see it also talks about having design tools for upgrading and converting those files, simplifying using the files between engineers in different locations and different firmware versions, as well as making the program available in other formats for importing and then working with other individuals. It also has the ability to do some analysis, take a look at some of the attributes within the controller program, specific to how it's programmed, what tag elements are in use, and much more. As we enter the hub, you'll see this splash page. I've already signed in, so I'll just switch over to that now. In the dashboard, we can see that there are several indicators for programs that are software services that are available as well as soon to be available items. Starting from the right and going to the left, I'll show you some of the information within. VectorTalk Design Studio is an upcoming product that is created as a cloud-based software from the ground up. And it's to help with design efficiency, allowing for collaborative work in design of compact and control logic systems. It also gives you the ability to leverage some of the practices evolved in DevOps, for example, sharing files that have some type of revision control. Moving on to the next product, we have an upcoming Factor Talk Optics is a new HMI package that is scalable and modular and open. In other words, it can run on Windows or Linux with dedicated hardware or in a distributed fashion. Then in operations and maintenance, we have the ability to look at CMMS, where we can help with job tracking of repairs, as well as part management and reorder. And then lastly, in the operations hub, we have the Factory Talk remote access. So this gives us the ability to establish a VPN connection with either a dedicated appliance, the Stratix 4300 router, or with the Stratix remote access runtime software. So a PC could be running that software and you'd be able to connect to it remotely for a, a local interaction to your control system from a secure remote location. But today what we're going to show is the Factor Talk Vault, and we're interested in talking about some of the features available to us today with an existing support login. So again, this uses the Rockwell Automation technical knowledge base login, and with that account you have access to the vault that is now loading. So here we can see that we have an organization for McNaughton McKay Electric Company, and then I also have my own private location for files that I may have as part of my projects. So this could be a library of, of projects that are part of a larger group and then I can copy and move those into other folders as needed. You also may notice that there are different versions of the files. We can download those and they could be ACD files, L5X or L5Ks. I'm going to download an L5X and then save it to my local drive. And then that would give me the ability to open that file and select the hardware and firmware version needed. Within this export file, we have the ability to open it in Logix Designer. And then while that is happening, we can also do things like upgrade the file from one version of firmware and controller type to what fits our project. So in this case, maybe we're going to look at version 34, which is shipping today, or maybe one of the less new versions like version 31, 32, or 33. So in this case, we're going to take 32 and then also look at the hardware that is associated with that. Currently, we're showing an L73, which is appropriate for version 32 firmware, 
so we can go ahead and continue with that upgrade. Now you may notice that there is a gray upgrading notification on the screen. So it's actually doing the job of upgrading from version 28 to version 32. And then while that's happening, we have the ability to work with the other files as well. So for example, if I look at this filler machine and I have the ability to look at analysis of that file. And this gives us some great information about the controls program and the hardware without having any Studio 5000 software loaded on my computer. Here we can see the rack for the controller. Because it's a compact logic, so there's just a single controller and no I.O. We also can see the program composition and controller task model that are employed by this program. Other notes of interest is here we have motion and we can look at some of the parameters within the motion configuration, whether it's a virtual axis or the physical uh, SIP drive axis. We can get information in regards to the request packet interval, which is shown as well as the uh, range of position and speed and acceleration. More details to the right could show us the motor catalog number. And again, we're getting all this information without having to install Studio 5000 software. Looking at other information that might be of interest, we see that it is a safety controller and we can look at the safety task information if we look at the details here. Looking at the analysis of another file, we can see some of the other attributes and where there may be some differences. If we select the safety task, again, we can see the mode, uh, whether or not the safety uh, task is locked, and then also uh, safety network numbers. We may also look at the module level and see the safety network number at the module level as well. As we can see, there's also a firmware indication there, as well as the level of rating that we have, whether it's SIL2 or performance level D. In the program composition, this is where we see what types of uh, tasks are involved and then we also have the ability to look at tags what types of tags and then lastly looking at object types that might be a part of the program so add-on instructions user-defined data types and even user-defined strings are shown here again we're getting information about who owns these libraries or these objects? These are vendor owned. These are part of the drives and motion accelerator toolkit. So they have the ability to uh, be managed by the vendor and then also give us information about how those interact with our control system. User defined data types has a nice tool that gives us the ability to select a user defined data type and indicate whether or not there's a relationship to an existing add on instruction. So we can see here with the UDT consume history, it is attached to an Axis consume SIP sync add-on instruction. And we can see again, there's relationships between those tags and that function. And lastly, one of the more interesting things to look at is the inner process communication. So if you have produced consume tags and you wanna have information or details about how that communication is being done, can select the details here and then here we can see the tags in use for that relationship as well as the re requested packet interval and then whether or not it is allowing for external access to those tags again this is all being provided to us through the cloud without any studio 5000 software installed so again we're getting some great information to help you move your project engineering along Thank you for watching this tech support video on Rockwell Automation's Factory Talk Hub and Factory Talk Vault. For more videos like this, please visit and subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel.